Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to introduce you to the pad view inside Scalar 2. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So we are inside Cubase's and we are going to click on the plus sign and add in a MIDI track and then we click in on the piano, we activate the list of browse, go up the hierarchy, select audio units and then scroll right down to find Scalar 2. We select it so it is loading now. Let's deactivate list and browse and let's maximize that screen. Next we are going to activate those sync so we don't forget. Okay so the link to the host is done and let's ensure that we are right at the beginning of the track inside the Cubase. Next we are going to select the cold set so we go to songs alternative one which is down there. So we have a nice cold progression. Let's select the cold and let's and drag and drop them inside the um, progression builder. Okay, now let's use the duplicate function to create a second pattern, which is a copy of the first one. Shift, click on pattern number one, duplicate. Okay, and now at this stage, I could also change the names of pattern one and pattern two, but I'm not going to do it to keep the tutorial shorter but you could do that for example you can name pattern one to intro or verse pattern two for example for chorus but i'll leave that to you let's go to the sequencer view now activate the or expand the playback performances activate pattern number two click on global create a group one change the mode to performances and then that change the pattern to something like for example part basic performance 10. Now let's select group one for all the chords which are part of that chord progression like so. Okay, now let's play that chord progression or let's play pattern two. So you get the idea of what it sounds like back at the beginning. Now let's go to pad view, which you can do that clicking on pad here right at the bottom. So as you can see, you have a view of all the patterns which you have created, which is really nice because it can be used, for example, to perform or create your song because you can also chain patterns together. So you can undo and redo here. You have a play, which at the moment is linked to the host. You have a looping, which is active, saving for your chord set and also your MIDI capture. Down here, sorry, on the right hand side here, you have this number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., which are your key selector, which are used to actually do MIDI bind, but also they're used to select the pattern. So in this case, I selected pattern number one, so I click on two, I selected pattern number two, I have done also MIDI bind two, as you can say, as it says here. But you can do that also, sorry, you can switch from one pattern to the other, just selecting the different patterns. Now, let me show you how you can switch manually first from one pattern to the other. And in order to do that, I activate also the looping. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I will uh, ask now uh, Scalar 2 to play pattern 1. When it gets to the end on the last chord, before uh, the looping restarts, I'm going to switch to pattern number 2. And therefore, I will simulate a manual switch. So let's try. Back at the beginning, play. That's really nice. Another way, which is simpler, let's deactivate the loop in there. Let's click and hold here and drag and select both buttons, button one and button two. You can see here on the right hand side, the, the key selectors are both active, they're both greens. What it means is that now I've chained button one to button two. So back at the beginning again, uh, in terms of measure in um, um, Cubases, and let's click play. nice you can see that one pattern has been chained into the second pattern and you so you can use this to create your songs which is really nice so let's go back at, right at the beginning let's click record in cubases and let's record this chord progression Let's stop that. Let's close Scalar 2. You can see we have created um, a MIDI recording. Really nice. Now, just as um, a little bit of fun, I will show you what you can do or how you can move forward from here. Let's create another MIDI track. Let's uh, 
drag and drop this recording. Now let's uh, mute that one. Let's go back to uh, the first track, open up Scalar 2 again, maximize this. Now let's go back to the sequencer. Let's go to pattern number one. Let's select global. Let's select group one. And now let's change from performances to base. Then let's select uh, um, basic two here as a pattern. Now let's apply the group one to all the different chords for pattern number one. Like so. Right. Let's go to pattern number two now. Let's select uh, group two or create a uh, group two. Let's change the pattern here to pattern number one. And now let's apply the group two to all codes in the code progression. Like so. So let's listen to pattern one. Nice, let's change to pattern two. Oops, let's change to pattern two, try again. The reason that uh, um, it was not holding the pattern two is because if you go back to pad, I still have both selected. So in order to remove that, you can click shift here, click in here, and then select uh, unselect all patterns. In that way, if I go back to the sequence, now you can see I can alternate between the two of them. So you remember the selection for pad view, and it's very easy to forget. So again, pattern number one, and this is pattern number two. Okay, very different. Now let's go back to pad view and let's select both patterns. Okay, so we have them like so. Let's go back right at the beginning and let's record this. Okay, let's stop. Let's quit um, or close this killer too. We have that uh, track which has been recorded. Let's add another MIDI track like so. Let's drag and drop that down here. Now let's uh, unmute this, solo this track plus this track here. Let's change here the uh, type of sound. Let's scroll down until we find something like a bass. Like why not this analog bass? like so then let's activate for example looping um let's ensure that the loop is correct yes it looks correct there okay that looks nice let's bring it, the mixer up and decrease the uh, volume for the piano let's play course you can continue like so so for example let's go to media let's go to uh for example audio uh, actually midi let's select classic machines here let's drop one of these um somewhere here from track number five like so really nice and then let's go back to the beginning and play Should have unmuted this track as well. Okay, so hopefully uh, this has given you an introduction to the path view, but also a quick introduction of what uh, else you can do with path view. Um, so uh, pod view is really is really great in terms of allowing you to create now effectively part of songs right i hope you enjoyed and find the tutorial useful and as always see you next time bye